Hi again, everyone. Gary Digital Williams here on the Box on the Beltway Podcast Network. And the Box on the Beltway Podcast Network can be heard on Spreaker, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, CastBox. We're on Podcast Attic. We're on Google Podcasts. We're on TuneIn. And we're on Spotify as well. And you can hear us on my Twitter page, which is Digital25. Uh, you can hear it on the Box on Beltway uh, Facebook Podcast Network Facebook page and on my page at YouTube at Gary Williams. Um, I've been away from a couple weeks. Uh, we had some personal things to take care of. Uh, for those who don't know, don't, don't remember from last time we talked that uh, I am um, recovering from COVID. Actually, I'm, 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 I'm pretty much fully recovered in all honesty. I've got some lingering situations, but nothing major. And I'm going to get those lingering situations checked out. Uh, my daughter and my son have fully recovered from COVID. My my wife is uh, getting better. In fact, she's probably at her best right now. She's still got some lingering symptoms as well. But uh, we're making it through. But we also have some other personal issues to take care of in, in, the, in the family and all that. Nothing major. Nothing bad. Nothing major. But uh, we just had to take care of everybody so I can finally do this this week. And unfortunately... Um, this week's podcast is going to be a lot of sadness. This is this has been a real rough time for our area uh, outside the outside the ring. Um, if you go back really to the passing of Fred Hurd, the father of Swift Jared Hurd, um, you know we've had a lot of sadness in this area, and it got worse. I don't want to say it got worse, but it it it, it continued to develop throughout the last couple of weeks. Um, with some passings that and one of them I just really heard about uh, that's far I went on the air, I just heard about this one so that adds to that as well and this guy, the guy, the other guy I'm referring to wasn't really from the Beltway but he did a lot for us and I'll tell you more about him in a moment so uh, folks for, the, for those who, who want to know this is going to be a very very melancholy podcast so I'll let you know about that Box on the Beltway Podcast Network brought to you as always by real-time pain relief. From boxers to ballerinas for shoulder pain and muscle strain, everything in between. Boxing along the Beltway recommends real-time pain relief, the natural, plant-based, safe, fast, and effective ointment. And you go to freepainoffer.com, buy $10 worth of real-time pain relief, you get a free $10 tube of real-time pain relief. Now endorsed by two-time world heavyweight champion Big George Foreman, so try his knockout plan for real-time pain relief. Rub it on. The pain is gone. In real time. And by DebraSpears.com. Great weight loss tips, great jewelry, and great training methods. All at Debra. D-E-B-R-A Spears.com. Well, we do want to start with some happy news. And that was a win for a uh, young man out of C. Pleasant, Maryland. His name is Akeem Action Action Jackson. He's the welterweight. And uh, he won a bout in, um, in South Carolina, in Rock Hill, South Carolina. He's up actually from Oxen Hill, Maryland. Excuse me, Oxen Hill, Maryland. He scored a first round knockout over Juvari Artis of Winston Salem, North Carolina, back on Saturday, March 27th. And Jackson, I saw a little video about. They sent me a video about, and I'm really appreciative of that as they did. But he clipped Artis with an overhand left to drop Artis early in the bout, and Artis did beat the ten count. But then Jackson landed another quick overhand left. Oh, it was a beautiful shot too. And he ended the bout at 127 of the first round. Jackson's now three and two, three KOs. Artist remains winless at 0 and 4. And that's pretty much the happiness we have this week, unfortunately. Um, we do want to talk about uh, Demarcus Chop Chop Corley's uh, bare knuckle boxing debut. That did not go well. He was stopped in the fourth round, could not come out for the fifth round by Reggie Barnett Jr. of Chesapeake, Virginia. And so um, Corley is. Um, is uh Owen one is a bare knuckle boxer. Reggie Barnett has been doing it for a little bit longer. He's now, I believe, five and one with two knockouts. Um we're gonna go over the April schedule probably in our next podcast. I know it will be April by that time, but we do have some some good bouts coming up in April. So we will do that uh in our next podcast. Um so of course we got we have to really I've been late on this. I'm thinking late on just about all of this, but uh, and I do apologize for that. But uh, I've been late on paying tribute to truly one of the great boxers of all time, the best middleweight that I ever saw, marvelous Marvin Hagler. Uh, of course, he passed away, and uh, and I I got to tell a quick story about that. Um, the first time I ever saw uh, marvelous Marvin Hagler, 
I was in high school. I was a junior in high school, and I was on the basketball team at at, at my high school, Georgetown Day High School. And we were actually in a tournament in Colonial Beach, Virginia. And um, we had lost the first round of the tournament to uh, Calverton School. We lost the first round of the tournament. And so we were, you know, we weren't, it was, it was a tough, it was a close game. We did, I believe it was a close game. And so, you know, it was tough, but me being a boxing fan and my roommate, man, by the name of Marvin Fonchoy, great friend of mine who actually, those, you know, him in the Washington area, of course, he's the son of the longtime uh, DC delegate, Walter Fonchoy, great man himself. But Marvin and I were roommates on that trip and we decided to go see the fights that were coming up. Uh, that said, it was uh, the main event was, of course, um, Sherry Leonard going after the WBC welterweight title <clears throat> held by Wilfredo Benitez. And the co-feature was Marvelous Marvin Hagel, Hagler against Vito Anafermo. And so we went to the uh, dyno across the street from our, hot- our motel and we saw the fights and uh, couldn't believe the first the Hagler was the first fight on the on the telecast it was ABC telecast. And Hagler, I could not believe he only got a draw against Anna Fermo. He would beat Anna Fermo later on, but uh, but it was a t- that was a tough one. He he was going, I believe, he was going after the middleweight championship at that time. Anna Fermo, I believe, had the middleweight title. So that was I could be wrong about that, but I, I maybe I think I'm right about that. But anyway, that was the first time I ever saw Marvin Marvin Hagler. A few years later, when Hagler became the dominant middleweight in the world. I made a trip with two of my friends from Howard University, Lori, I forget Lori's last name, and uh, Cleopatra Robinson, who's now going on another name. She uh, adopted a Muslim faith, and uh, she goes on a name, I think it's Karima Muhammad. But anyway, we went up along with my parents to Charlestown, West Virginia, and uh, mom and dad played the horses, and Lori, uh, Karima, and I, we watched the fight on the big screen at Charlestown. It was Marvin, Marvelous Marvin Hagler against Juan Domingo Rodon. It was a great fight, too. Well, Rodon really gave no quarter in that bout. So it, it was an incredible, incredible um, bout there. So those are my my two recollections of Marvin Hagler, along with the uh, fight against uh, Sheree Leonard and just he being a major part of the Four Kings legacy uh, with uh Leonard, Roberto Duran, Thomas Hearns, and, uh, and of course, Hagler. Um, great, 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 uh, middleweight best I ever saw. I, I really, I mean, all, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to say he's the greatest of all time because you had Sugar Ray Robinson at some point, Carmen Basilio and so many others, but for my money, as far as middleweights of today, and I've seen some great ones, Carlos Monzon, I saw, you know, many other, of course, Bernard Hopkins, Incredible middleweight, but nobody to me touched the power and the determination that Marvis Marvin Hagler had. And uh, he he passed away suddenly. It was a t- it was a tough loss, no question about that. And then things have just gotten gone downhill from there in this area. Um, we lost a bo- former boxer who many people consider. And I'm not sure if I don't disagree with this, that 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 I don't don't disagree with this. The best boxer to ever come out of the beltway who did not win a world title. And, you know, you, you talk about people like Daryl Tyson, who fought some great boxers, but just couldn't get over the hump as a world champion. Andrew Council, a lot of his uh, famous people came out out of this area, you know, Um uh, Reggie Showtime Green, another one. Daryl Coley. Those are the four boxers uh, off the top of my head right now that I really believe were the best boxers to never win the world title. And, and of course, you can add Victor Davis to that, too. Victor Davis, another one. But Victor Davis never really, because of some legal issue, never really got close to a world championship. Coley, Tyson, um... Uh, Green and Council, they competed for world championships. They had world title shots. They just didn't didn't win. 
But the man I'm talk, going to talk about, the man who, who who suddenly passed away this week, the only reason why he never had a chance at a world championship is because he didn't want it. His name was Jamal Hinton. Jamal Hinton's story is is incredible. It ends up tragic, of course. But it it can be confusing. It all depends who you talk to. And you talk to him and see some quotes from him. You know why. But this is a guy who seemingly had it all. And he decided, I don't want to do this anymore. At a very young age, too. We'll get to it as we talk about it. Now, I'm going to, I'm kind of doing this off the cover. I don't have any notes. I'm not going to do it like I normally do with career by career, me up, uh, uh, fight by fight career. Like I'm just, I, my, one of my problems is this past so weeks, my computer hasn't worked. So I haven't been able to print anything. So I'm going to do this kind of off the cuff. But Jamal Hinton was an incredible boxer and his career only lasted four years. Um, he was in the amateurs with an outstanding amateur and he just missed making the 1988 Olympic team. Uh, if he had made it, we would have two, uh, local, uh, boxers on the 88 team. Andrew Maynard did make the Olympic team and then win the gold medal in Seoul in 1988. Jamal Hinton in the Am national amateur boxing championships. But when it came down to the Olympic trials, Kennedy McKinney won out over Jamal Hinton in 1988, going into the Olympics. And Kennedy McKinney, McKinney went on to the Olympics that year. Um, Jamal Hinton turned pro, and he signed and worked with a man many consider to be the greatest trainer of all time, the late, great Emmanuel Stewart. He was part of the Kronk family. And he was in there with some, some great people in the Kronk family, you know. And, you know, Hearns was on his way out, but... I know, um, I think the Paul brothers were there still. Uh, Obacar was part of that. Um, I think Obacar was part of that. Let me double check that. I'm not, that may not, that may not be true. I, I think he was, but he was part of that. Um, and so many others that, uh, McCrory, Milton McCrory, uh, Donald Curry, you know, these were, these were Cronk guys. And, you know, to be a Cronk guy, you have to be very special. And, uh, Jamal Hinton was. In just his 11th pro bout, um, Hinton would win the WBC Continental America's Championship. He would win a bout over Robert Shannon. And it looked like the sky was the limit for this guy. He it just thought like he was just ready to go, and he was on his way to winning a world title and bringing another title back to the beltway. When this is around the same time, right, a little before. Actually, this is a little before. Um... Um, Simon Brown would win his title. Maurice Block would win his title. Hinton was a little bit before that. And you know, he was on his way. And of course, he was also trained by his uh, father, Junius Hinton, outstanding trainer. And it looks like he was just on his way. Then at the age of 22, with a, with a, with a title shot looming, Jamal said, I had enough. He really did. He won his last bout by a lopsided 10 round decision over uh, Lucio, Lucilo Nolasco. And then at the age of 22, he just quit. He just quit. Now, later on, he would tell folks. Now, one of the reasons why I had heard he had quit, I never really talked to him about it, but he had adopted the Muslim faith. And I think one of the tenets, I'm not, I mean, I'm not a, a religious scholar. But I believe one of the, the tenets of the Muslim faith is your inability to harm people, to hurt people. That was part of the reason why, in fact, it was a big reason. Let me say that it was a big reason why Muhammad Ali did not go into the, to the draft because he didn't have any any issue with the Viet Cong. Yes, paraphrase, but he didn't want to hurt anybody who didn't hurt him. So that was... For what I heard, that was one of the reasons why Jamal Hinton decided to uh, to um, to quit boxing, and it did cause a rift between uh, 
Jamal and his father Junius for a long, for quite some time. But here's what he told. He told a a, a group. A, uh, I am reading a note here. He uh, told a, a website called LiveFight.com back in 2013. He said, "I began." He said, "Quote: I began to lose the desire that was needed to be victorious in battle, and a few of the things that happened made me realize I needed to retire." That was something taking place inside of me spiritually and mentally, and it was causing me to tire of boxing. It was causing me to become confused about the whole idea of training and beating people up. Be retiring was the bravest, most stand-up decision I ever made, and my feelings about boxing were changing, and for the first time in my life, I felt free. So that was um, that was what uh, Jamal Hinton had said about uh, why he retired. And he never looked back. He never looked back. It was it was really he was he was there for good. He was done. And you know, much as we loved watching him box, and I, I saw him a few times. Never saw him live. I did see him a few times. Uh, it was a little before I started uh, covering boxing on a full time basis. Um, he wasn't. He was. He had great hand speed, great foot speed. He had power. He's twenty two and 0, 17 KOs. He was a remarkable fighter, and. Whatever he started to give up. Now, you know, I got to know him a little better later on in life, and uh, and he um, used to have his son. His he had his son boxing, and he'd box in the Golden Gloves and on, and it was great to see that. So he, you know, he was giving back to the sport. He of course reconciled with his father, and it, 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 you know, he was a great, great young man. Really was, and apparently. He passed away in, at a car accident. He had a car accident. Now, I don't know sure whether or not he was in the car or whether the car had, had been disabled. He was outside the car. And somebody, you know, I'm not exactly sure how it happened, but it wasn't a car accident. So just a tough loss. Another tough loss. He, great young man. He always had a great smile on his face. And, uh, you know, he, he was a really, really nice man. Uh, Jamal Hinton, a great person. We're going to miss him. No question about it. Jamal Hinton Sr., actually. And we're going to miss him. No question about that. One of the greats out of this area and a great man, even even more so. No question about that. And then we just found out that a man that didn't live in the Beltway, but really gave his time to contribute to what the Beltway was doing on the amateur side, primarily, and really on the amateur side. His name was Steve Soderman. Steve Soderman. And... He was from Davenport, Iowa. And I know for the last few years, from like 2016 to 2019, which our last Golden Gloves, um, full Golden Gloves tournament, he would come to the Beltway. He would come to Rosecroft Raceway. And he would be one of the officials, one of the referees, one of the judges for the Washington Golden Gloves. And I think he even did some of the Virginia Golden Gloves, Virginia, North Carolina Golden Gloves. I think he did a couple of those, too. And, you know, he was a real tall, lanky guy. You know, he really he was uh, he'd been in he'd been in the business, been been in referee and been in the amateur program for many years. I do know that. And uh, he would come and he would he would be an official, be a referee, be a judge. And he'd be a major part of what we did, what the what the PVA uh, did and the South Atlantic as well. And so it was, you know, he was a nice guy. Like I said, I didn't, didn't really know him all that well. Uh, talked to him a little bit. We changed pleasantries. So I didn't know him all that well. But he was a good official, good judge, good, very good referee. He really was a good referee. And I just found out he passed away. And uh, really, it, this has just been a really, really tough, I mean, as bad as 2020 was. And 2020 was ridiculous. Oh, God. And all aspects of it were just ridiculous. Um, 2021 is a is starting off a little better, but this stretch has been really, um, really sobering for us. I mean, between Fred Hurd's passing um, and, again, uh, Jamal Hinton, Steve Soderman, and a few others. Uh, Marvis Marvin Hagler, of course. I mean, it, it has just been a, a tough, and Leon Spinks also this year. Um, it has been a real, real tough, tough year. Um, 
And we're just praying that the boxing that's coming up in the next couple of months, couple of weeks and a couple of months will 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 change our demeanor a little bit because it, it's been tough. I mean, you know, we got some big bouts coming. I do want to want to acknowledge one bout in particular, uh, Demond Nicholson out of uh, Laurel, Maryland. He is scheduled to face his biggest test to date. I believe it's on April 24th. I'll double check that date when I do my full schedule. He'll be taking on Edgar Belanga. Belanga um, is the knockout artist who has been knocking out everybody, literally. And um, he's been something special. No question about, about that. So um, that'll be coming up soon. We'll talk more about that as well. Um, but um, but he, you know, it, it's just been a real, real kind of sobering year. And my personal issues, uh, me having COVID and my wife having COVID, my son, my youngest daughter. Um, it has not been easy this year. I'll, 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 I'll kind of lament that you has not been easy this year and um, hopefully the rest of the year will get better and we can start doing some things here in the beltway doing some situation. I can't forget all oh, I, I can't remember. I can't forget this, but we lost Tracy Fagan from the Virginia state commission as well. So this, this has not been an easy week, an easy year for me, me personally and for other people as well, but we're going to, we're going to march on through. And we're going to keep going and try to do these podcasts a little bit more frequently than we have last few weeks. Uh, hopefully get my con- my uh, computer situation better scared, uh, better uh, taken care of. And we're going to go through. We're going to have a good year. All right. Hopefully we can get some big wins from the Beltway and we'll see what happens going forward. So. Like I said, just just a lot of lot of tough news this week. It really was a very tough tough couple of weeks, and uh, and again, I appreciate you staying with me on this as well. The Boxing on Beltway Podcast Network is, as I would say, brought to you by Real Time Pain Relief for FreePainOffer dot com. You go to free you go to FreePainOffer dot com, buy ten dollars worth of Real Time Pain Relief, you get a free ten dollar tube of Real Time Pain Relief. Now endorsed by two time World Heavyweight Champion Big George Foreman. So try his knockout formula for real-time pain relief. Rub it on. The pain is gone in real time. And by DebraSpears.com. She has great weight loss tips, great jewelry, and great training methods. All at Debra, D-E-B-R-A Spears.com. Thanks for joining me, everybody. And again, I apologize for the sadness, but uh, this is information we had to get out. My name is Gary Digital Wins. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Box on Butler Podcast Network. And always remember to keep supporting the best boxing in the world. The boxing along the beltway. Thanks for listening. Take care. Oh, beautiful right hand by Daryl Coley.